Welcome to Finance Conversations. This is the 77th episode of the Merging Life and Money Show, and I am delighted to be here. With me today, let me bring him in, is Eric Dudley. Um, Eric is a regular contributor to the show, and he will be talking about mutual funds, exchange-traded funds or ETFs, and index funds, three of the most common types of investment funds. And guess what? According to observances.com, today is never give up day. A great time to honor the strength and perseverance of the hundreds of millions of people who never give up. So back to the show. So before we get started, let me introduce myself. For those of you who do not know me, I am your host, marie jo César. I help professional women in particular transform their relationship with money by teaching them the relevant financial skills and knowledge they need to take control of their money, manage their finances, and understand that they can live their best life with the money they have. Thank you. Thank you for joining in today. So if you are watching the replay, make sure to type hashtag replay in the chat and leave us some comments and questions. Welcome, welcome, and welcome. I come to you live every Thursday at at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time to share valuable information about how to achieve financial wellness and live your life with means and meaning. So today, we will be talking about, about investment, okay? So first, let me introduce Eric, as some of you may have not met him, because as I mentioned earlier, is a regular very knowledgeable contributor to the Merging Life and Money Show. So Eric is an independent, experienced, holistic financial advisor who specializes in retirement planning, investment solution, and life insurance. Eric is also the founder and president of Dudley Financial Group and one of um, Eric... um, and his company's main objectives is to help their client build their best tomorrow while protecting them today. So welcome, Eric, once more to the Merging Life and Money Show. And welcome, followers and, and listeners. Thanks for joining in today. So I would suggest that you grab a pen and a notebook as you might want to take some notes. This is is a very, um, I would say, important topic. And you may want to take those notes to discuss them further with your family members, your friends, your colleagues, your neighbors, whomever you want to. Because remember, it is about sharing values that could benefit others. So if you have any comments, put them in the chat for us. And we'll be delighted to get back to you. And as you know, the main objective of the Merging Life and Money show and my very strong why is to empower as many women, in particular as I can, with what I know about money and finance. And I do not hesitate to um, invite people like Eric to help me with that mission and that passion. So today's conversation will revolve around investment, as I said, particularly those three common type of funds. And they are, again, I'm going to repeat them. Mutual fund, exchange traded funds, commonly known as ETFs, and index funds. So let me start with a few disclaimers. Everything said in this show, the Merging Life and Money show, is for general informational and educational purposes only and is not intended to constitute legal, tax, accounting, or investment advice and should not be relied on for legal investment or accounting advice. You should always consult with your own tax, your own legal or own investment and accounting advisors before engaging in any transactions. So let's start. If 
you are looking to invest your money, you have probably come across terms like mutual funds, EDFs, and index funds. But what exactly do they mean? And which type of investment fund is actually right for you? So, well, Eric will tell us all there is to know about them. So first, let's look at um, mutual funds. So Eric, what are mutual funds and what are their pros and cons? Okay. Well, hey, thanks for having me on again, MJ. Always a pleasure. Um, well, I mean, first of all, I just want to go ahead and kind of define what funds are. Uh, you know, whenever you're investing, you can invest in stocks. They're individual companies. And, you know, it's always it's a good idea to invest in stocks if you believe that company is doing something great and you, you believe in their future. Um, but stocks can be very up and down. They have a lot of volatility. You know, like if you invest in a pharmaceutical company and you think, oh, wow, they're going to have the next breakthrough in cancer research. But if the FDA decides that, that, that it's not we're not going to be able to use that drug, the stock can plummet. On the other hand, if they use it, the stock can go through the roof, you know, so it can be very volatile. So a lot of people uh, choose to invest in funds because then you're investing in a lot of companies. So uh, uh, that's what funds are. They're a basket of companies, a lot of companies. And you're buying into uh, sometimes a dozen, sometimes 50, sometimes 500 companies in a fund. And by doing that, if one company has a shortfall, if they have a, a bad, you know, FDA um, uh, diagnosis to, of a drug, or if they have a, a really bad quarter, maybe their CEO uh, got arrested or whatever, you know, it's not going to pull down the whole fund. You know, you're, you've got a lot of a little bit of diversification for that. And so that means that you're going to have less volatility, which is what investors normally want. I mean, I'm not saying I'm not saying you shouldn't have some things, a little bit of money that is invested in so, into something that's more speculative, but it should be a low, low percent. You want something that's kind of more safe uh, for the majority of your money. But anyway, so to go on to what mutual funds are, mutual funds are money that people who have mutual interests are going to buy into these funds, which are a basket of, of, of stocks, uh, and they're going to buy into it. And, and because they believe, of course, that the that these the funds eventually will go up, and so mutual funds um, they they give you uh, like I said a little bit of diversification. Uh, they are uh, not only traded at the end of every day. Okay, so as opposed to what a stock does, if you get into a stock, you could say, okay, at eight o'clock in the morning you buy the stock, and by eleven o'clock you sell the stock. Because you're like, oh, I'm taking some profit or, oh, my gosh, I'm taking a huge loss. Well, you can't do that with a mutual fund. OK, you get into a mutual fund and it'll be in the stock the next day or it'll be it'll be traded the next day. You can't get out of it until the end of the day the next day. So if you saw something horrible happening to it, you just kind of kind of live with it. And, uh, and that's the way mutual funds are. You just live with that. Um, mutual funds do have active management. They have a manager uh, who's, who's looking after it. Now, what does the manager do? Um, if a mutual fund, let's just say it's a tech, tech mutual fund, there might be some, some companies in the fund that are underperforming, okay, that are causing it to be, um, you know, to causing the fund to not do as well. They can remove that. From time to time, they'll take out some companies and they'll add new companies to that fund. Uh, by doing that, you're, the, the, the mutual fund manager is making the fund uh, a little better. And so that's one of the reasons why mutual funds have higher expense rates. Okay, A mutual fund a lot of times will have a 0.5% um, expense ratio to a 1.0% uh, ratio. Okay, So they can be a little bit more pricey. But you do get that management, okay? And that way you can have a little bit uh, a more confidence that as you're investing in it for a long period, period of time, uh, you, you can see um, things changing as the world changes. So quick question before you, you move on with your mutual fund. Um, 
the expense ratio that you just stated, uh, is that um, the norm? I mean, I know there is um, a difference um, when you uh, look at domestic funds mm -hmm. as opposed to international funds. Yeah. So can you tell the audience a bit of a difference? Because it could be kind of a sticker shock for people. Oh, sure, you know? sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it's just like anywhere else. I mean, you know, I'm just giving a ballpark, you know, generalization of, of where these can be. But they can be lower or higher. And it depends upon who you're investing through also. You know, so you, you know, some, some companies you get mutual funds through that might have higher expense ratios because maybe they, they feel like their management is better or maybe they just want to take more profit mm -hmm. either way. But you, you need to uh, um, check around and see which one is going to cost you the most, but even mm -hmm. more so, in my opinion, which one is going to give you the biggest net gains from it and right. net gains are what you're really looking for it's above what you pay for it how much money do you wind up at the end because really that's what matters i mean it, would it matter if you're paying almost nothing for a for a uh, investment that makes you very little or would it be better if you instead invested you know more into it you know paid more but of course had a much higher gain i mean in the end that's what it's about right so yep. It's a it's a good idea to kind of look at it overall and see what the net um, uh, gain is instead of just saying what the expense ratio. Is. Yeah, but I mean, you know, it's like everything else. Uh, it's a, a price that you pay, mm -hmm. and that's what people tend to look at. And it's that's why it's, it's important to to mention that because you could be paying a lot of money for a, a fund that is not, you know. Um, has very little profit, yeah. very little earnings, and and you could be paying something very low for a fund which is doing pretty good. <laughs> so so at the end of the day, is a bottom line, right? That we're looking at, um, right? Yeah. And the last thing I wanted to mention about uh, mutual funds is that uh, it, you when you buy a mutual fund, you buy it at what is called the the um, the uh, the NAV, which is the net asset value. Uh, and the NAV is the total assets of the company minus its liabilities and divided by the total number of shares. So let's just say, for instance, a company was worth uh, $80 million in assets. Um, and, and then, I'm sorry, make it $100 million in assets uh, and minus $20 million in liabilities. Uh, it, it might have um, $8 million. Uh, shares available. So you would divide 8 million into 80 million. You'd wind up with the, um, the, the, the stock being at $10. So, mm -hmm. so if you do it like that, that's how you, that's how they determine how much the, uh, the fund is worth per share. Right. Great. That's great information there. Mm -hmm. So um, over to the second type of fund, Mm -hmm. that I would like for you to talk about, which is um, newer than uh, the mutual funds. <laughs> uh, and they are called ex exchange traded fund or ETFs. Uh, what are they and what uh, would they be best used for? Okay, well, ETFs are are a lot like mutual funds. Okay, they are, again, it's, it's a bunch of people who get together and they decide they're going to, they want to buy baskets of companies just like a mutual fund. Okay. And so, so that's a really, really nice thing to do because again, it gives you a little bit of diversification just like a mutual fund does. Um, now there's some differences in it though. And I think there's some really good advantages. Uh, mm -hmm. One, it's not, it's not actively managed like the, with the, uh, the, the manager in the mutual fund making changes they, it is passively managed. Um, now that's that's good and bad, okay. But if you're looking for low uh, expense ratio, that means it'll have a much lower expense ratio. Um, the expense ratios for ETFs can be as little as zero percent, and sometimes uh, only as, uh, as much as 0.2 uh, percent. So so zero to 0.2 percent is very inexpensive. Uh, so to be able to do something similar to what a mutual fund does. But for literally 
one fourth or one fifth the price. Uh, it, it's it's pretty nice. Uh, and so an exchange exchange funds uh, also have less of a minimum to invest in. A lot of times mutual funds will have a little higher investment minimum when you, when you start off. Exchange uh, traded funds. Uh, they don't have that minimum. You can you can start off really low. Also, it doesn't have the end of the day trading only. You can trade it just like a stock. Again, you can start off at eight o'clock in the morning. And if you don't like what's going on, you can at noon get out of it and be in and out just like a stock. Uh, so uh, that's unlike a mutual fund as well. So mutual funds are similar in some ways uh, in the fact that they're pooled investments to get a basket of companies but they are less expensive. They are passively uh, invested, not actively. And, uh, and they do have, a, a, you, can, a, you can get to it a little better than you can a mutual fund. Okay, so we will call them the mutual fund cousins then. Yeah, yeah, they are <laughs> very, very similar in a lot of ways. Yeah, great, great. So our um, uh, last uh, one, that we want to, to, to touch on today is um, index fund. So tell us about index fund and tell us how they differ uh, from both the mutual funds and the ETFs. Well, okay, an index fund is, is just, it's a fund that is mimicking what an index is. Okay. So like, if you look at what the S and P 500 is, it's the, it's 500 companies that, that are in this one index. Okay. In the United States, it's all uh, business and technology and, and, and it's the top 500 companies. And so, so the, uh, 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 an S&P 500 index fund would be a fund that mimics that all as closely as possible. OK, so that's all they did. The fund managers just said we want we want it to be completely correlated to the S&P 500. So if the S&P 500 goes up 10 percent, we want to be as close to 10 percent as possible. If it goes down by five, we want to be as close to S&P as, as possible. OK, mm -hmm. so so it's going to mimic it as, as much as possible. So you're going to get what is the benchmark. OK, you, you think that uh, an index is a benchmark. Well, that's what you're doing for it. You're, you're going for it. You're, you're wanting to have that benchmark. Okay, so you can get an index fund in a mutual fund, or you can get an index fund in an ETF, either way, okay? So you can have it both ways. So it doesn't matter. It, it's, it's not like it's different than ETFs or mutual funds, but it is different in what it's invested in, okay? So the other ones could be in different sectors. You might have a technical, uh, a tech mutual fund or, e or an ETF. You mm -hmm. might have uh, um, an international mutual fund or ETF. Okay. Mm -hmm. You might have all sorts of different sectors of, of business for the mutual funds and ETFs. Mm -hmm. This one is specifically for an index. Yes, so right. whatever index you want to go with, you can get an index fund for it. And it can be a mutual fund one or an ETF. Right. So what are the most popular in, in indices or indexes that are there, um, you know, for example, and if you could give us a bit of more information about. Sure, you know, sure. Yeah. Well, most of them like might like the S&P 500 because it is like the standard. Uh, but if you want to get into something that's more small business, uh, so a small cap, uh, you would go to the to, uh, Russell 2000. Uh, if you want to just do, you know, old businesses, the Dow Jones, if you want to do more technical, the NASDAQ, um, if you, um, there's, there's also international ones that you can look into. Uh, but, but yeah, there's a, there's a different index for, for different, different markets. Uh, so just whichever one you think that would be, uh, the one that is according to business, the, whatever business cycle we're in, uh, the most profitable. Good. Well, that, that's very, very good, good information. Um, uh, so I, I, I really think that, you know, um, it is a very big difference between the three of them uh, to a certain extent. And, um, and they could be used for different purposes as well. You know, when you look at, you know, your... Your, your portfolio and your asset allocation and etc. 
So again, um, thank you so much, Eric, for educating us about the three investment vehicles that um, uh, I just mentioned. And I am going to wind down some and, and sum it up. And so today we talk about investment. And I just want to do a very quick summary um, uh, about what you discussed. And, and let me again say that these are three most common type of investment vehicle. Um, there are plenty of them already. <laughs> oh, yeah. But, but today, um, Eric has chosen to, to uh, focus on the three main ones. Okay, so just as a very quick summary, because uh, it could be somewhat technical, you know, for the for the non investment savvy people, but um, it's something that everybody can learn if they they choose to. So again, mutual funds, ETFs, and index funds are all popular choices. Okay, when it comes to investing money, but it can be difficult to decide which one is the right one for you. So let me quickly go through what I understood Eric to say. And so it's good to repeat again so that um, people understand. So mutual funds are what you say, what you would say actively managed by a fund manager or a team or a team of fund managers. And they make decisions about what stocks or bonds to buy and sell. So this management comes with a fee, okay? There is no free lunch or dinner when it comes to investing, right? And that fee is what they call the expense ratio. And as you explained, this could range from anywhere from 0.1 something to 2.5%. I mean, it all depends on what you are investing in, mm -hmm. invested in. And um, and some type of investment draw a larger fee, some type draw a, a, a lower fee. So, um, and that kind of fee, when it's quoted, it's usually quoted uh, per year. So if you are charged 0.1%, it would be for the year. So, um, and then uh, another thing that you, um, you have to look at is that they are both, Mutual funds are bought and sold at their uh, net asset value or, or NAV or, or NAVs, I mean, <laughs> whichever way you want to, to call it. And this uh, net asset value is calculated at the end of each trading day, right? So when it comes to the exchange traded fund, um, as you mentioned, they are very similar to mutual fund in that, that they hold a basket of stocks or bonds, right? However, they differ in that that they are traded on, on an exchange, <laughs> like, you know, the S&P or any kind of stock exchange, and their price fluctuate throughout the day, mm -hmm. right? So yes. they are not calculated at the end of the uh, business day. They, are, they fluctuate um, throughout um, the day, and it is according to the supply and demand. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. So and uh, so EDFs or exchange traded funds also have an expense ratio, but it is usually lower than that of the mutual fund because they are not actively uh, managed. OK. And the last one that you touched on were the index funds. And these are passively managed, meaning that they track a specific index Um you know, the, the one that comes to mind usually is the S&P 500, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is probably the most popular one. And they have a low expense ratio because they do not require active management. So index funds are brought or sold at their market price, right, which is determined by, again, by supply and, de and demand uh, in the market. So which <laughs> type of fund is right for you? So I would say that if you have a long-term investment horizon and can stomach some market volatility, you know, uh, mutual fund would be a good choice, right? But you have to be prepared to, you know, expect some volatility. Um, and if you're going to have palpitation of the heart, stay away from that. 
Okay. <laughs> <laughs> when, when the stock goes up and down. So if you want to avoid paying active management fee and prefer simplicity, then index funds may be right for you, right? Yeah. And lastly, if you want the flexibility to trade throughout the day and don't mind paying a little bit higher fee than the index fund, then the ETFs may be the best option for you. Yeah. So again, thank you, Eric, for, I hope I, I summarized what you said accurately. Uh, thank you for sharing these investment nuggets today, right? And um, uh, let me put your contact information at the bottom of the screen. Uh, no, this is not you. This is you here. There you and, go. And um, I will end by saying that now that you have been educated um, about those three most common investment options and hopefully you understand them, now is the time to decide which one is right for you. So I will say keep in mind that each fund type has its own set of pros and cons. And so make sure to do your research before investing. And if you have any questions or need help getting started, do not hesitate to contact Eric, okay? He will be more than happy to answer any of your questions, and he will be more than happy to get you started on building your future wealth and put you on the path to financial success. Eric and I hope that this information, uh, today's information was very helpful. Okay, and as you know, I like to end my show with a quote, and today I chose one from Carlos Slim, and it reads, anyone who is not investing now is missing a tremendous opportunity. So who is Carlos Slim? Uh, Carlos Slim is the richest man in Mexico. Uh, in fact, at one point, I think he was the richest man in the world for a short period of time. He is a multi-billionaire, <laughs> billionaire with a B. Oh, yeah. So this brings us to the end of today's Merging Life and Money episode. I hope that you have totally enjoyed it. And please watch the replay. Uh, it's worth watching if you are your intent are to either start to invest or you are an investor and you need clarification of what you are invested in. Okay? And make sure to share it with others. So thank you again, Eric, for your awesome contribution on today's show. Uh, we will meet again soon <laughs> with another great topic. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. So for more information about how to achieve financial wellness from the inside out and live a purposeful life with the money you have, join me next Thursday at 5 p.m. Pacific time, 6 p.m. Mountain time, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 9 p.m. Atlantic Time for my Bermudian people. I'm getting better at that, Eric. And 10 a.m. Friday, Brisbane, Australia Time for my Australian friends. Thank you for being here today on the Merging Life and Money Show. I am your host, Marie-Jo César. I will be back again next week. Until then, continue merging life and money. Bye for now.